Hello, and welcome to Straight from the Heart. I'm your host, Sherry Gantman, and today we're going to be talking about real power. A lot of us think that power comes from success, money, recognition, being in control of someone, having power over someone, but that is not what real power is. Are you curious what it might be? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today because with me is Dr. Carol Adrian. She has written a book called The Purpose of Your Life. And it's one of those books that I have to tell you I've read now twice because I find it so significant to my life and almost everyone I work with. So it is such a pleasure to have Dr. Adrian here today. Welcome, Carol. Thanks, Sherry. Carol, what is real power? Well, I think everybody probably has their own definition for this, but in my mind, real power is when you know that you can handle any situation. You know that you have the resources within you to do this. And you don't get off center. You don't get pulled off center by every little thing that comes down the road. So real power is having a sort of inner, inner sense of self that anything that comes to you is something that you're going to deal with. Okay, so let's say I'm in control of a situation, or I think that I'm in control of a situation. I think I have power, don't I? Well, it depends. It, um, you'll notice when you're losing power, for example, you begin to feel nervous, uh, you get addicted to certain old patterns, you keep doing the same things over and over again, your body feels tense, uh, you can't sleep. I mean, there's a whole range of red flags that come up when we think we're in power, but we're not. Okay, so because I believe that when I'm losing power, it's almost like an immediate thing. It's something unconscious happens, and right. suddenly like, I've lost that oops, center. I've lost it. Mm -hmm. I've and lost and you center. kind of know it, and you kind of don't, because I, you start covering up so quickly. Right. You know, right. with one of those kind of behaviors to cover up that, gee, I've really lost <laughs> my sense of center here. So I wonder if we can talk about what those different right. kinds of personalities are that we right. fall into right. when exactly. we... Exactly. Well, I think power. that's good, because first of all, what we want to do is really become more conscious. Mm -hmm. So we have to notice our own patterns first. Now, uh, there's, a, there's two ways of looking at it. Either you can look at the people in your life and say, oh, there's one of them over there. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, oh, this is how I'm handling this. I see it in myself. The first one where we lose power instantly is when we see ourselves as a victim. Mm -hmm. And you, you'll notice this in other people, and then you'll notice it in yourself. So first, you'll notice it in other people. And these are the people who are always retelling the painful past. You know, how many times do you hear people say, oh, well, you know, when I got divorced, I mean, that was 20 years ago and they're still talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it was six years ago, it doesn't matter. But it's the idea that you're always spending a lot of time looking, looking to the past mm -hmm. and retelling that as if it justified everything in your now present. Mm -hmm. Like you can't have good things happening to you because you had such a terrible childhood. You know, we, can, we have to move on in life. Mm -hmm. And so if we stay a victim, that's one of the main ways that we lose power. And in our culture, that's very easy to do because think about the news reports every night. There's a victim of this, there's a victim of the bomb blast, there's a, you know, plagues, whatever, hurricanes. We're always being styled as a victim. And a lot of times we get a lot of attention for that. Absolutely. So there's some goodies Absolutely. for being the victim and it's really hard to give this up. This is the secondary gain that you might say, what's the payoff for seeing yourself as a victim? Well, first of all, you don't have to make any changes. Mm -hmm. You can just stay there in your rut. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, so all of these ways that we lose power are really, uh, you know, the underlying platform really is fear. So there's the victim, mm -hmm. which causes us a lot of times to flip into something which I call the over-accommodator. Now, this is where we lose power when we're always trying to please somebody that you can never please. If the situation, you're trying to control it, really, trying to please, please, please. Well, it can never happen. You can't, you can't get there. Well, so, yeah, because I think when people go into a pleaser mode, that's automatically you're giving right. your power away because right. it's please like me. Yes, if that's you like right. me, that's right. then I'll have some power. Right. But and maybe you'll even win that liking or that love yeah. for a moment. But then what happens when that person takes it away yeah. or doesn't respond favorably right. to something? It's like phew, right. there goes it's all your power. A, that's right. It's a temporary placation mm -hmm. that just doesn't work. But we keep doing more of it. That's another sign that you're hooked into the addiction side of it. Is you keep doing more and trying to do it, trying to do it better, trying to get their attention, trying to make them like you. It doesn't work, and they they literally back away from that. Mm -hmm. And then there's another way we lose power, of course, which is that critical side of us. Mm. We become yeah. very critical. Now, there's a lot of people who use that as their primary mode of trying to stay in control and to get energy and attention, 
by being very, very critical of everything that you do. Mm -hmm. And I guess one of the problems with being critical is we might be critical outside, oh, look at how she's dressed, or look at that red suit. I'd never wear a red suit. Yeah. But inwardly, we really do the same thing. Yeah. So whatever we're judging out there, we're also judging inside. Right. So, okay, so those people, because I know a lot of people who do secretly admit that they're really critical, right. that they kind of sit back and they've right. got their well, arms what crossed. They, they feel this sense of momentary power when they have the one-up hand. Mm -hmm. They've made a point. They're, they they get the power from feeling self-righteous. That is not true power. That's just a momentary head trip that really doesn't get you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And it and it really you lose power because you're not really using your full capabilities when you're in that place. You're in a rut. Well, and your heart is closed. Yes. So there's not really a chance for connection. Absolutely. What happens is actually the connection that you really want, you're absolutely cutting it by mm -hmm. separating yourself from them and judging them. So it's really, um, it's really very debilitating for you. Mm -hmm. And um, so what is another way we lose power? Uh, well, uh, let's see. We have the victim, the over-accommodator, the interrogator. We, we lose power when we become aloof. We sit back. Now, this is a little different. We may not be overtly criticizing someone, but in our heads we are. So we're sitting back and we're being very critical and very um, secretive, maybe suspicious. We're not letting people know where we are so that we think we can get, keep the upper hand. And in fact, we're not. We're, we're really losing. We may have a great person that has all sorts of messages and information and opportunities that could move us forward. And uh, I have a great friend who does that. He keeps his phone turned off all the time on call screening. Mm. And I said, why do you do this? Well, he doesn't want to talk to his creditors. But on the other hand, he's not allowing, you know, energy to come into him that might, might mm -hmm. uplift him in some way. So way. is I'm shy also aloof? Like for people who uh, go, shy I'm is a shy. Version. Yeah. It, it, well, if you, if you justify everything by saying, well, I can't go to parties because I'm too shy. Uh-huh. Okay, fine. What does that really do? It just keeps you at home, feeling sorry for yourself, going or, down the tubes. Or you may go to the party, power. but you stay in the corner. Right. You're, and. you're not taking a risk to at least participate. And, mm -hmm. you know, the real sign of power is when you're able to fully participate in life mm -hmm. instead of planning it to death. Now, that's where we get into the last behavior, which is controller. Mm -hmm. Now, we all do this to some extent, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. we, Wait, uh, you're pointing at me. What is <laughs> <laughs> We all do this to some degree. What do we try to control? I had someone the other day was working the exercises in my book, and she said, you know, I found out what I try to control is time. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 a that's, mine. that's a biggie. Trying to control time, uh, trying to call, control other people and situations where you cannot control them. Now, this is different than having self-control and self-discipline, which, of course, is, is good. That's good to have some self-control in situations. But when you're trying to control other people, and uh, set everything up so nothing goes wrong and you know and always feeling that if you don't control something horrible will happen this is this is when you really lose power because you can never ever get the kind of power that you want by that mode of thinking what about always giving advice is that control? that's a form of control yes very good that is yeah. talking too much is the same form it's just another version of that mm -hmm. trying to control a situation by just talking continuously to get the attention coming to you mm -hmm. and I've noticed that in some of my group work and there they're often is somebody who just talks compulsively almost as a and that's their way of controlling the energy there but it's interesting because a lot of times people play into that as well mm -hmm. you may not even want to be in control but people turn to you or look to you and say here take control and they may not say it right. verbally or right. with words but they're asking you a lot of questions they're asking a lot That's of advice true. Mm -hmm. or there's a vacuum and someone has to fill it mm -hmm. so there's a lot of seduction for going into control now what I'm talking about and what you're talking about how is that losing power is that what I'm talking about is that a way we lose power the way to have power is to stay in the moment and say, okay, here I am, what's the situation, uh, looking around, what are my options, mm -hmm. and then taking some action. That's being a powerful person in the sense you don't have power over others, but you have power to deal with what life is giving you in the best way, the best way that is the higher good for yourself and for the situation. You're making, you know, your intuition is your power. 
-hmm. listening to your intuition and really saying, oh, you know what? My first impression told me not to do so and so, and what did I do? I went ahead and did it anyway. Well, learn from that. Mm -hmm. Learn to trust your intuition. That's that's powerful. Learning to trust that. Um, no, keeping yourself in good health is powerful, actually. Mm -hmm. If you're stressed out, you're tired, are you powerful at that moment? No. You don't have the resources. You're drawing on your you know, your reserves, and in that instance, you're not going to be at your best. Sure, so it's being able to take control of your own life right? in all of those situations. Mm -hmm. So what you mentioned earlier, and I want to focus a little more mm -hmm. on that, is underlying all of these stances we may take, victim mm -hmm. or the critical person or aloof yeah. or the controller, yeah. is fear. It's fear that we're going to lose out. It's focusing unconsciously that there's a scarcity that there's going to be a lack. I don't have enough of love, attention, money. I don't have enough. So you're, that's driving you. You don't have enough. So you don't really trust that you can get your needs met. And the only way you can get your needs met, you fall into these old ways. Well, I better whine like a victim so people will think, oh, poor her, I'll give her a break. I'll give her a discount. I mean, how many times we go in the store and we sort of whine a little bit, hoping that the clerk will give us a This is so unconscious. It's <laughs> pathetic is what it is. <laughs> but we do it. So what we're talking about here today is how can we become more aware of that? So noticing some of our behaviors. Okay, know. so you, I, I actually Xerox this from uh -huh. your book so we could talk about because I thought these yeah. were very cool. You made lists of right. unconscious behavior mm -hmm. patterns that we fall into that pull, right. try, we try to pull energy mm -hmm. from others with this in an unconscious way rather than right. asking for our needs to right. be met directly. So let's start with the first thing, lack of discernment and good judgment. So right. some of the things, like do you jump into a friendship yes. or intimacy yes. too fast? That's right. Yes, I think we all have that sense that we find somebody, oh, we want to, we'll just jump in there. We think they have something that will help us. It's really as simple as that. We think they have something that we need, and so we grovel, we jump in too fast, we do anything it takes to get close to that person. Okay, but what is the difference? Let's say you meet somebody, mm -hmm. and you do have an automatic attraction mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. So you are naturally pulled, even against your best instincts. So yes, you can feel that loss of center and that loss of power, but there you go, because you're just attracted to them. And there's something, your intuition, maybe your intuition is saying, don't go so fast, but you are. Mm -hmm. And it, you do give your power away so quickly, because then right. it's all about, will they call, do they like me? Yes. But what can you do with something like that? Because part of you, the minute you start losing power, your head can start talking and mm -hmm. go, don't go there, don't do this, get mm -hmm. centered. Mm -hmm. And the other part just goes, right. it's so unconscious. Right. What can someone do? Well, I like what you said because you just said it against my better instincts. So in some cases, in this case, I think that, you know, we're looking at good judgment here. Mm -hmm. What do we need to do? Is a lot of times we need to kind of set arbitrary rules, I think, in the beginning just to start practicing new behavior. Since it is something we have to change, it's very deep-seated. Mm -hmm. So slow down. Just simply slow down. Okay, but your head's saying slow down. Mm -hmm. Don't go there. Mm -hmm. All right, get centered. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath. Right. And <laughs> there's another part that just goes, oh, that person now, is so it, cute. It sounds like we're talking about a dating situation here. Well, we are talking about a yeah. dating situation This is more like here, a, a romantic attraction. Right. But let's say it's a romantic, but you can do it in a moment in the workplace, too, with a, a mm -hmm. boss that you're trying to please. Or it's like you jump in way quickly, or you want yeah. a job that maybe isn't even the best for you, right, but you get right. obsessed. I must have that right. job. I know. For me, it's making promises. Oh, I'll do this, I'll do that, and I'll uh, commit to a lot of things which I know I can never, you know, I can't really do that and have a life. <laughs> but, so, slow down. We have to slow down and begin to notice when am I most uh, vulnerable to have this happen. Now, if we're prepared and we know we're going to go on a date, for example, at first date, what do you need to know going into the situation? I'm vulnerable here. I don't know this person. So maybe I'll just slow down. I won't make any promises about seeing them until I have a chance to sleep it over. You know how the old cliche, let's sleep on it. Yeah. Sleep on it, not with him. <laughs> <laughs> sleep it over. Kind sleep of it over. <laughs> Thinking about it a little bit. You know, let's take some common sense here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so give yourself some time. Don't, uh, especially don't commit when you're tired. This is a big one for me. Mm -hmm. When you're tired, you ought, 
paradoxically, you tend to commit to more things rather than being rational and saying, well, you know, I'm tired, maybe I should slow down here and not commit to so many things. Mm-hmm. So using good judgment is really paramount. It's really noticing who am I in situations, where, what do I, where do I tend to lose my center? Mm-hmm. Let me notice that uh, I'm going out here, I'm starting to build fantasies about this person, I'm trying to see them in a good light, they're not even telling me this stuff, but I'm making this up in my head. Uh-huh. Notice that what's going on in your head. What is your internal dialogue? Is it way out there making this person look pretty good? Well, we know that not everybody is so perfect. <laughs> right. Let's have a little reality check here. Now, I can say this to you, and you know and you would, we, what we're talking about is unconscious patterns. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to keep practicing this. Okay, so hold that thought. Okay. If you are just joining us, you're watching Straight from the Heart. I'm your host, Sherry Gantman, and with me today is Dr. Carol Adrian, and we are talking about real power and also ways we unconsciously lose it in a flash and what we can do about that. So, Carol, besides lack of discernment Mm -hmm. and using our good judgment, Mm -hmm. what is another way that we lose power? Well, uh, the ones we talked about earlier, I think, bear repeating, people-pleasing, because that is so, uh, we can do that at so many levels, uh, with our bosses, with our spouse, with our children. In a place, with our children particularly, you know, we need to take more responsibility. Uh, But in dating situations, you know, you're trying to please rather than interact. Mm-hmm. There's that sense that I want to be chosen. I think this is something that that's a big. It came up for me when I was writing this. It mm-hmm. came up for me strongly, and I uh, one of the people I interviewed for the book really brought this to my attention. It was really a good interview because that idea of wanting to be chosen, pick me, pick me. Now this stuff comes from very deep levels in our childhood mm-hmm. when we you know we want that attention from our parents. Depending on the kind of parents we had, if they were being aloof with us, then we really had to struggle to get them to notice us. So this carries over into all these other uh, relationships. Now, I want to be chosen. Is that the same as I want to be special? That need for recognition? Or yeah, is that a little different? Yeah, I think they may different? be two different ones. I think I want to be so special. Let's do one at a time. Yeah. I think I want to be special is something that may drive us to control situations, uh, to take on more work than we really can handle, uh, to choose people who we want to try to get their attention they're never going to give it to us it's kind of that's kind of an odd one because you you pick people that aren't going to respond to you so mm-hmm. that you can prove how special you are so these these there are very very subtle uh, differences here i think but all of them really um, show us where we're losing our power we lose power when we're in the past mm-hmm. when we're focusing on past events we're clearly not in the moment of power where, which is the present we lose power all the time when we're always fantasizing about a better future, something we have we'll never get to. You know, it's good to have intentions, but if right. you're just focused in the future and how you're going to control things and what could be or done. the one, you know, the one is such a big fantasy with so many people. The one, the one. Now it might be the one, the special one who's right. going to come right. and show or the me love job. or the special job, but it's the one, that thing out there right. that one day is going to ride on its white horse and save me that from the so mediocrity true. that I am living That now. is so true. That, and, and your, your statement, it's out there. You mm-hmm. see, that's a signal right there. When you're focusing on something out there, you've lost power because the power is always within here, looking around, being centered, not in a self-centered way either. Right, but what can I do? Right. Maybe even what can I do to create the future I want? What steps do I right. need to take right now? Right. Because that really is the only That's power it. that we I, have. I, li- I want to just come back a moment to that idea of that golden opportunity. It's sort of what I, I think sometimes of this carrot. You know, how many times have we, in when we're particularly when we're self-employed, but even in corporations we could do this, there's that one magic client that if we can just get our foot in the door. Mm-hmm. How many times have we worked for free, worked terribly long hours, humiliated ourselves to get our foot in the door, right? Mm -hmm. And have we ever really gotten anywhere with that? I wonder. I wonder about that one. Because that's a a professional version of people pleasing that we do on a personal level. Mm -hmm. But trying to do anything we can to get our foot in the door. I don't know about that one. So that's that's where we've lost power there. Mm-hmm. And also in relationships, I think we lose our power. And as you were saying earlier about with children, with our spouse, where all we want to do is please to be loved. Mm-hmm. And we stop, we stop asking for what do I need. Yeah. So exactly. if you're not asking for what you need, you have to start looking at that. Mm-hmm. And you find yourself, as you were saying earlier, exhausted or... Right. 
Okay. And asking for what you need, is, again, it's not meant to be in a selfish mode, like I need this, so that means you lose. Right. No, I, these, are, these are the necessities that my constitution, my way of life, I need this. Mm -hmm. And I'm clear about that, and I'm going to take care of getting that myself. And if I meet somebody along the way that's wonderful and I want to have fun with, that's great too. But I'm not going to look to that person to be a mind reader and, and know, oh, Carol Adrian, she needs this, I'm going to give it to her. No, it, I can't ask other people to fulfill my needs. But if they have things that I can enjoy and interplay with, that's the beauty and that's where the power is. So you don't believe that, let's say, I need something from you. I need for you to call every other day. Mm -hmm. I may not get it, but... I need that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything wrong with asking for that? No, I would assume that if you're going to be in relationship with people, you have a mouth and you can talk and communicate with people and say over time, you know, and if you pick somebody who's naturally withholding, then you've got to look at that. Okay, so this, let's talk about withholding love because mm -hmm. that's something else that's on your list. Mm -hmm. How is withholding love losing power? I understand the other side when you're with someone withholding love and you keep constantly trying right. to seek that love, right. you are losing power. But how is the one who's withholding love right. losing power? Well, think about it for a minute. The person who's withholding love is sitting here thinking, I'm special, I'm not going to play that game, I'm going to be quiet, I'm going to wait to see what they do before I make my move. So they're aloof. So they're aloof and they're cut off mm -hmm. from life, from that natural interplay. They think they're being safe, but in fact they're cutting themselves off. Mm -hmm. So they, that's what they're doing. They're keeping their energy over here in a way that says, I'm not going to play unless I feel really safe. So they don't take very many risks. They risk, they, they uh, you know, really lose some opportunities because they're secretive or suspicious. Well, it's ba based on fear. Yeah. And the minute you are fearful, right. you can't love. And it's, so there's a loss there. Cutting, it's an energy. Really, it's an energy system when you really get down to it. Mm -hmm. Almost physically, it's an energy. If you want to be in the flow where things mm -hmm. come in, power comes in, that creates the power that you want. And, you know, it, that's the adventure of life. You can't be safe, you know, 24 hours a day. Okay, so I love this one, too. I just looked on the list. Committed mm -hmm. to something that's never going to work. Right. Now, let's talk about that. Well, or uh, even commitments in general. That's right. Commitments, you know, when, you, when you're not willing to commit to something, if, you want, if you're going to move ahead in life and you're going to find your purpose in life, you're going to feel fulfilled and powerful, at some level you're going to have to commit to a certain path. Mm -hmm. You know, which, you know, you committed to psychology, I committed to this metaphysical path. We, we decided this was our thing. We loved it. We wanted to, you know, get into it. And I talk to a lot of people who want to find their path in life, but they're not willing to commit to anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, they want to keep all their options open. Well, you can have anything you want, but you can't have everything you want every, you know, 24 hours a day. You have to make some choices. All right, so to commit or mm -hmm. not to commit. Mm -hmm. That is the question. That should have been Hamlet. To commit or right. not commit. That's right. <laughs> That's really the modern question. <laughs> right. So when we don't commit to anything, we keep our options open, how do we lose power? Because we have nothing to really um, you know, commit to that will give us a sense of, here's something to deal with, now how am I going to handle it? You, you just stay open and you flounder around. Mm -hmm. This is, in, in psychology, psychological terms, you might call it the puer, the eternal adolescent. Mm -hmm. You're in that state of mind where everything is an option and life is just one big bowl of cherries. But you can't really, you cannot really uh, grow from that. That's, you have nothing to really interact with and find your fulfillment with. Okay, so let's say people out there in the audience can mm -hmm. really relate to, God, I lose my power in so many ways, right. people pleasing right. or uh, not really willing to commit mm -hmm. to any given path or fantasizing about the one. And, right. You know, or let's say you're in a meeting and you mm -hmm. just start feeling yourself getting weaker and weaker and more afraid to assert yourself. What are some things that people can do when they begin to recognize, I'm losing power here. Right. I'm losing my center. Yeah. It's good to think in terms of like when you're in a meeting. Here you are in a meeting. So what can you do right on the spot? Uh, you have to become aware of what is my natural tendency. Do I naturally tend to become aloof? For me, I, I often have the tendency to become aloof. So I, I know that going in now. So I think, okay, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to find one person that I feel a little bit of a connection with. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to fall in love with them, but someone that looks nice. And mm -hmm. I'm going to initiate the conversation. So for me, that's recovery mm -hmm. in being able to be the first one to reach out and say hello and smile and just kind of 
get the ball rolling. It doesn't have to be some brilliant conversation that I start. So be willing to reach out. Uh, staying centered physically is a, is a very big one. Sometimes I tell my clients to just physically take your palm of your hand and put it right on your solar plexus. Unobtrusively, you don't have to make a big deal of this. <laughs> but just kind of put it right here mm -hmm. because that will bring your energy center into focus. You'll mm -hmm. be, okay, here I am in my center. We know that that is energetic. Probably to breathe. And start yeah. breathing. Mm -hmm. and, okay. You know, mm -hmm. notice what your internal dialogue is. Mm -hmm. I have seen myself go into meetings and I can listen to the little voice in my head that says, oh my goodness, look at that person. They look very uh, imperial. They're very, uh, you know, they, they have the degrees. They have the stature. Oh, they're the uh, vice president of research and development. Oh my goodness, they have more information than I do. They're going to be smarter than I am. You see, mm -hmm. you watch your internal dialogue. And you set yourself up, and you to, set be yourself up right there. to be a victim. You've, you've already lost power going in the door. Mm -hmm. So you go in, you know, thinking, you know, you, th you think whatever thoughts you have about yourself, you know, you're an okay person, you have a lot to offer, you're going to go in there, and you're going to have a good time. Uh, one of the people I interviewed in the book actually is an actor who went into for a big audition. He actually is a very well-known actor mm -hmm. on uh, the TV, and uh, he had read about these ideas and went in and decided he was just going to have a good time, and you know, that's what got him the... He got the part. He went home and he had the part before he even got home. That's great. And he just felt good. So coming in with a sense of feeling up good, optimistic, letting about life who show you. Are. you. The other thing, Sherry, that I like a lot to remember, too, is that everything we do has a purpose to it. Mm -hmm. So if we can remember to go in and think, okay, no matter what happens today, I know there's a purpose for this, and even if I don't get what I thought I went, wanted to have going in, I'm going to know that I'm learning a lesson there. Carol, we're out of time. Oh, I am bad. so It went so <laughs> quick. You know, yes. I'm like, oh, I want to do more. Thank you so much for being oh, here. Thank and you. I love your book, The Purpose of Your Life. Thank you. And you are really a blessing. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks. And to you, my wonderful audience, start tapping into where your real power is, and that's being you and letting you out. Remember to stay centered and go in with as much of your being and letting yourself shine as possible. That's your real power. God bless, take care, and we are going to catch you next time. If you have any questions for Carol or me, there's a number at the end of the show. Please call. Bye-bye. Let your truth be shown. You're one of a kind.